Hi. Today we're going to talk about hand stripping the pet terrier. And I have a little Cairn Terrier that I'm going to work with today. And I'd like to make some distinctions between um, proper show hand stripping and hand stripping the pet. Basically, we make some compromises when we hand strip the pet. In order to fit it into the time frame and of a normal grooming day at a salon and in order to make it affordable for the pet client. So that means that we're not being as rigorous in uh, hand plucking every little area of the dog. We're maybe using a coat king to get some of the hair out and we're maintaining a harsh colored coat without a total three hour hand strip. Basically what I do when I work on a pet terrier is to do what I can do on hand stripping in an hour and then I do a bath and a trim on the dog. In some cases if I have real terrier people that I'm working with, I don't even do a bath. I just do hand strip and a little bit of trimming to the breed profile. Okay, so let's take a look at our little boy Seamus and see what we're going to do for him today. So here's Seamus, he's a little Cairn Terrier, and first we're going to comb through the coat and just make an assessment of what we think we're going to want to do today. Um, he's got a lot of length, so I'm going to want to get bring that length down some. I'm looking at what's underneath there. He's got a good underwear, so it looks like we could kind of be fairly rigorous with our stripping. His Shoulders need a little bit of work. His front is not too bad. It's in pretty good shape since last time. Seamus gets hand stripped about every um, seven or eight weeks. Okay, we're going to work on the body, the jacket. So in this whole area of the body is called the jacket. We're going to work on the jacket, and I'm using a coat king, kind of a medium coat king, and I'm just going to see what I can rake out. That will save me some hand work. On show dogs, this might be considered cheating, but on pets, it's perfectly acceptable. He's clearly, Seamus is clearly not a show dog, but he's an adorable pet. And we really like that his owner wants to keep color and texture of his hair and she's willing to work with us on a hand stripping program for Seamus. If I was to clip Seamus, all of his hair would be this light straw colored, like this part of the front where I haven't stripped it much. You know, it would all turn light like that. Instead, we have this rich multicolored brown, dark, brindley jacket, and that's what the main benefit is of the hand stripping. Plus this hair is more coarse than this not stripped hair and it helps to repel dirt better than the soft, very porous coat of a clipped dog. So we're just getting some, getting out what we can with the coat king. There's a little more that we got. And when you stop getting results, we stop using that tool. These are my three most favorite hand stripping tools. We have the McClellan set of fine and medium stripping knives. And these are very old, well broken in, and I use them uh, an awful lot. And then this is a Canadian toe file. It's a, a basically kind of an artificial pumice on a handle, and um, it really helps. It really helps to grip the hair and just kind of pull out dead hair very easily. See how easy that is, and um, it's nice to create a very natural kind of look. Works good on Seamus's coat. Doesn't the toe file doesn't work on every coat that you hand strip, but it certainly works on this kind of longer type of hair that I'm working on here. So my technique is to kind of use my thumb to rough the hair up against the grain, and then I pull back down, pulling from the length. 
from the tips so that I leave some hair and pull out the longest. So now I'm using a, a medium stripping knife. It will also, I can equally pull hair out, but the uh, advantage of the stripping knife is that I can use it to cart out some of this undercoat. So I've already done some of that. You see it over here, but see, it pulls out fuzzy stuff. You don't want to remove all of that because you want to leave the dog with a nice, with something there, some underwear. But the uh, stripping knife is also a good carding tool. On the, for the side jacket, I usually use my fingertips. Notice I'm wearing latex gloves, another of my stripping tools. I keep a box of latex gloves for my hand strips so that I can just easily grip the hair and pluck without having to use a lot of powder or ear powder or something to help me grip it. The gloves simply allow me to pluck very easily and quite quickly as you see. Because I've been doing this for a few years now, I've gotten pretty fast. And speed is a part of the, a key to successfully hand stripping in a pet salon, so that you're not taking four hours to do a single terrier that you're only going to get eighty-five or a hundred dollars for. So you want to be able to do a good job in the kind of allotted time frame, realistic time frame that suits the budget of your client. For the chest, I usually just pull it out by hand. You know, the cairn, you don't want a fully flat, totally crisp chest. You just kind of tidy it up in the front. And sometimes he gets a little mouthy. Seamus doesn't really like this part very well, and he can get a little mouthy. And sometimes I compromise with him and use the thinning scissors here, but he's letting me pull out a little bit today. Because he has such a floppy little head, we put some product in his head to help it stand up. So we're going to work some gel in there. Good. Then we'll continue drying. using a chunking shear and we're just shaping his little head as best we can. He's not totally thrilled about head work so we allow it to look somewhat natural. And, and Seamus has these lovely eyelashes which his mommy likes us to keep. So we do. Isn't that something? And your eyelashes are so cute. The idea is to cut the crown of the head even with where you have clipped the ears. Something like that. So that when you stand it up, it doesn't stick up above where you've clipped the ears. At least that's what they told me.
you want to make sure that you get enough off from underneath the head that the dog has some suggestion of a neck. It's starting to look pretty cute. For my finishing touch, I use some of this um, men's hair sculpting gel. It's like hair, liquid hair wax. You rub it in your hands, and then it'll spike it up a little bit. See, look at that. Check that out. And you just kind of pat it on there, and it'll smush it all up. And that really gives it some shape and body. And then you can just wipe it off and shape it a little bit with your comb and with your fingers. Leave it nice and tidy. Oh my God, he's cute. Check a little my work a little bit here with a scissorine. Oh my god, I love it. Shame it. Something like that. Is he cute? Is he cute? You can just continue to work this with your fingers. Do a whole lot of things once you put that stuff in there. And then it comes out in a day or so. But it makes him go home and look nice and tousled. See how he's got some height to his crown? That is so cute. Gives him a little boy look, a little dude look. <laughs> Here we are at the end. This is uh, his final look. And you notice it's a little bit what we call rough and ready terrier. Um, I think pet terriers should be left kind of informal. Imperfection is cute. Um, he doesn't have to be perfectly scissored uh, round head. He's a scruffy little terrier guy, and this is cute for him. And it fits in our time frame. We got him done totally even taking our video in an hour and a half. And uh, she's going to... Uh, be here to pick him up soon and we think he came out pretty cute. What do you think?